Hello students, in this video I will be going through exercise U5A04B where I will be applying concepts related to the triangle angle bisector theorem and the side splitter theorem. Let's take a look. Okay, so question six. Uh, what I see here is uh, a large triangle and inscribed inside the large triangle is a smaller triangle and the two and there are two sides that are parallel. This is set up prime for the side splitter theorem, which really just states that the side the corresponding sides are proportional. So if I have I can set up x over five is equal to nine over three. I can also say x over 9 is equal to 5 over 3. You see how in either case the proportion is set up uh, pretty much the same way because, look, what I'm doing here is I'm comparing x with this side here, 5, in the first ratio. You can also do this. If I were to cross multiply these things, right, uh, what I'll end up with is I'll end up with... Um, 3x uh, is equal to 9 times 5. And then if I divide both sides by 9 and 3, I'll end up with this ratio over here. Right? So all of these mean the same exact thing. Anyway, I'm not going to go into too much detail as I go through the problems, just because those details were already um, explained in during the lesson. So I'm just going to go through the exercise here. So if I divide both sides by 3, I'll end up with 15 as an answer. All right. Here, uh, I need to solve for what this is. So looking at this, because this length is half of this overall, and same thing with this, this length is half of this overall. So therefore, I know that x will be twice as big as 7. So that's 14. Okay, moving on, I can compare x to 12 is to 13 to 16. So what will that be? x is equal to 13 times 12 over 16. And what is that? That's 156 over 16. But actually, you know what? I can do better because I don't have to multiply 13 and 12. I can reduce... I can reduce 12 and 16 first, right? So if I reduce 12 and 16, uh, they're both divisible by 4. I get 13 times 3 over 4. And that's really 39 fourths. Okay, moving on. I can compare 12 to x plus 1 is to 8 over x minus 1. And if I cross multiply, I'll get 12 times x minus 1 is equal to 8 times x plus 1. Distribute the 12. Distribute the 8. Subtract 8x from both sides and add 12 from both sides. I'll end up with 4x is equal to 20. Divide by 4, x is equal to 5. For all of these, I only need to solve for x. So, okay. All right, so this is uh, an example set up for the triangle angle bisector theorem. So what that, what that theorem states is uh, if you draw an angle bisector to a vertex, from a vertex down to the opposite side, right, what will happen is the sides will be broken up into proportions, 30 to 24, will be equivalent to 20 to x. So I can cross multiply. And actually, before I um, do the multiplication, notice that both sides here have a common factor of 10, so that's 3x, 2 times 24. And then divide both sides by 3, right? And since 3 and 23 goes into 24 8 times, I end up with x is equal to 16, because this becomes 2 times 8, because 3 goes into 24 8 times. Okay, again, the side split, uh, the ang triangle angle bisector theorem, 
I do 3x plus 3. Actually, I can do it in reverse. I can say x plus 6. So 3x plus 3 is to uh, 16 to 12. And seeing that 16 to 12, I can reduce that to 4 thirds. I can then cross multiply. And I'll get 3x plus 6 is equal to 4 times uh, 3x plus 3. And seeing that I have a common factor of 3 on both sides, I get x plus 6 is equal to 4 times x plus 1. Distribute the 4, 4x plus 4. Subtract 4x, or subtract x from both sides, I get 3x. Subtract 4 from both sides, I get 2. x is equal to 2 thirds. Okay. Error analysis. What is Benson's error? So he did 5 to 10 is to x to 7. So what he did is these sides are not corresponding. These are not corresponding. So sides are not corresponding. Sides compared are not corresponding. Ratios are incorrect. Okay. Mathematical connections. What percent of the area of triangle PQR is the area of triangle QRS? PQR is the area of triangle QRS. Explain. So if you look at this, um, what percentage of the area is triangle is the area of triangle PQR? So, uh, so in this case, triangle PQR and QRS, what percentage of the area? So I know that that's the altitude right there. So if, let's say if that's the altitude. And this guy right here, I don't know what that is, but I can solve for this length right here. So I can say 6 to 8 is to 12 to x, right? Let's call that guy x. I can cross multiply. I end up with 6x is equal to 96. Divide by 6, I end up with x is equal to 16. So x is 16, right? So I don't know what that the, what the length of the altitude is. Let's call the length of the altitude a. Okay. So what I can then do is I can say, oh, uh, the altitude times the base. Let's say QRS. Okay. QRS has a uh, a length of has a base of RS which is sixteen, which we just solved. So it's one half a times sixteen. This is equal to the area of triangle QRS. Okay, so it's 8A. Let's try to express the area of PQR in terms of A. So area of triangle PQR will equal to one half times A times the whole base, which is 22, which will be 11a. So if I compare this, okay, the question is asking for what percent of the area of PQR is the area of QRS? Well, that would be 8a over 11a, and what is that as a percent? So let's figure that out on the calculator. So 8 divided by 11 times 100, that would be 72.73% approximately.
Okay. Moving on. Higher order thinking. Suppose Q, P, I'm sorry, O, P, and Q are mid points of the sides of L, M, N. Show that L, O, Q. Show that L, O, Q, O, M, P, Q, P, N, and P, Q, O are congruent to each other. So I know that if they're midpoints, then these two are the same, then these two are the same, and finally these two are the same. My goal is to show that all of those triangles, those three triangles, OMP, QPN, and PQO, are all congruent to one another. So <clears throat> I have two pairs of sides that are already congruent. I have, um, let me see here. So if this side, let's call this x. I'm sorry, let's not call that x. Let's call this x. This is x. Let's call this y, and this is y, and this is z, and this is z. Then it can be then it can be shown that it can be shown that OP will have a length of z. It can be shown that OQ uh, will have a length of y, and it can be shown that a, a PQ will have a length of x. And if you're wondering why that's the case, well, that's because we can set up proportions, right? Uh, so, so wait a minute. All three triangles, as a matter of fact, all four triangles, okay? Uh, all four triangles, all four smaller triangles... are congruent because all four triangles have side lengths of x, y, and z. Okay. For exercise 17 and 19, find each value. Uh, all right. So, again, more side splitter theorem. So, uh, it looks like I need to solve for x, y, and z. Uh, so, <clears throat> I can say, uh, according to the side splitter theorem, I can say 4 over 2 is equal to 6 over y. Let's cross multiply, end up with 4y is equal to 12, divide by 4y is equal to 3. And according to, um, again, more side splitter theorem, or not side splitter theorem, according to the um, proportions that I can set up, now that I know y is equal to 3, I can then find out what x is and what z is, because I can then compare side lengths. I know that um, 6, or z, divided by 6 is equal to uh, x divided by 9. Right? I'm comparing the whole length, okay? x divided by 9. And why is that? Uh, or what would that equal to, or what would that look like? So I don't know what z is, and I don't know what x is, but this is a proportion I can uh, keep for now. Um, I can then also establish that... Uh, I can also establish that x over 9 is equivalent to 13 over uh, 6 plus 3 plus 9, right? x over 9 is equal to 13 over 6 plus 3 plus 9. So if I do that, I have x over 9 is equal to 13 over 18. Let's cross multiply. I end up with x is equal to 13 halves. 
And since I know x is equal to 13 halves, I can then solve for what z is by using the proportion I found before. So z will equal to 6 six x over 9 or uh, 2x over 3. And if I substitute in what, uh, what I found for x from a moment ago, z will equal to 13 thirds. The question here didn't even require me to solve for z, but I did it for you anyway. Okay. And moving on. What is the value of x? So in this case, it's 16 over x is equal to x over 4. Cross multiply, 64 is equal to x squared. x will therefore equal to 8. Technically 8 and negative 8, but there's no such thing as negative length. That's why we only take the positive number. Okay, for exercise 21 to 23, find each value of x for the given value of y. Okay, so this is set up prime for uh, the triangle angle um, bisector theorem. Uh, so we can say 15 over 7 is equivalent to y over x. And if y is equal to 16, if y is equal to 16, so I can say 15 over 7 is equal to uh, 16 over x. Let's cross multiply. I end up with 15x is equal to 7 times 16. Let's divide both sides by 15. 7 times 16 over 15. Uh, I don't know what that is, so I'm just going to go to my calculator. 7 times 16. Divide by 15. 7.4667. 7.477. Whoops. And then if I do the same thing, I say 15 over 7 is equal to 20 over x. Uh, again, cross multiply, I get 15x is equal to uh, 7 times 20, divide by 15, x is equal to 7 times 20 over 15. And this I can reduce, because uh, 5 goes into 20 and 15, so I get uh, 28 thirds is equal to x. And lastly, uh, I can say 7 over 15 is equal to 18 over, I'm sorry, is equal to x over 18. I can cross multiply. x is equal to 7 times 18 over 15. And 3 goes into 18 and 15, so it's 7 times 6 all over 5. So it's 42 fifths, and that's it.